Hey guys, hope you're having an amazing day wherever you're in the world. Most of the time, I share the fun side of my travels, showing you where to eat, sleep, and sightsee. But like with anything else in life, there have been bad experiences. About two years ago, when I was traveling through Asia, I got dengue fever. I mistaken it as food poisoning. Keep in mind that you could get dengue fever in other continents as well. As many as 400 million people are infected yearly from dengue fever. Some cases are fatal, so mosquito-borne illnesses are not to be taken lightly. The next part of this video I filmed and edited in early 2017, but I didn't release it until now because I was not fully healed. I have re-edited the original video and added more insight. I hope you find this video to be informative and promote preventative action so that you may have fun and healthy travels. The last thing you want on your trip is to be sick in bed, so close to all this amazing food and these amazing beaches, and so far away from home. Hey guys, I'm in Taiwan currently, and it's my eighth day being sick with dengue fever. I got dengue fever in Cambodia, and I got bitten there a lot. Another place I got bitten often is in Bali. I get bitten almost every day, but I just didn't expect to get dengue fever. On the day I went to see the sunrise at Angkor Wat, I got really sick all of a sudden. And I was thinking it was food poisoning because after I had some cocoa shakes, I started to feel nauseous and then my head started to hurt throughout the day. And then um, when I walk around, uh, I would black out suddenly. So I bought a three day pass to Angkor Wat. I only got to see half a day and then I just knocked out in the tour van. Uh, I had fevers. I felt very nauseous and then if I move my eye like this, it would feel very sore and then oh, I was very tired After I got back home from Angkor Wat, I slept from 4 p.m. for 40 hours Of course, I had little breaks in between where I would go to the restroom I post a little bit on Snapchat because I, you know, I always like to post something on social media But there came a point where I just, even looking at the phone and just thinking about food It just made me really nauseous and I just couldn't do it anymore. So I didn't eat much the first uh, day. And then the second day, I tried to eat a little bit more. I needed energy. So I, I couldn't tell if I was nauseous because I was sick or because I was hungry. Um, it was probably a combo of the two. It was a very um, mentally draining because on the second day when I had major fever and I was just knocked out, I had dreams. And actually, I remember waking up at random times and then I remember bits and parts of my dreams. One of the nightmares was uh, street vendors chasing me and asking me to buy something. <laughs> I also had unfavorable memories from the past resurrect and they were haunting me and some really unnecessary emotions resurfacing. It was really tough because it's like, oh, all those things I thought I overcame, that I thought I worked through, that they're no longer a problem, but closed book on a chapter. Like a page turned on the previous chapter. You know, I thought I flipped that, and then I'm done with it, and then, you know, I'm at peace with it, but no, like all those things sprouted back up and all the pages, you know, like rewinded and, oh, popping into my face, all those memories, and I was like, what's going on here? And I, I was so weak that I couldn't even fight it. I couldn't even work them back and be like, okay, calm down, it's okay, like, be forgiving, be compassionate. I, I didn't even have the energy to do that. I had no energy to be positive, so like, I was really like, angry, and then sad, and then miserable, and all these like, emotions, wide range of emotions, so, it was, <laughs> I was in bed the whole time, but man, it was like a roller coaster, emotional roller coaster. It's uh, day eight, and I'm um, starting from day six-ish, um, that's when the fever, went away and I didn't have any nausea. Actually, that was the best day so far. Day six was the day of my friend's wedding. The next day, on Sunday, yesterday's day seven, and that's when I developed a rash all over my body, except my face and uh, my arms. And actually, I felt it the most on my hands and feet. And it felt like it's a little bit, you know, swollen. And my hands and feet are much better now. My arms are still somewhat Rushed up. Okay, you guys know I don't really shave that much, so please excuse the hairs. Alright, so I have all these bumps that used to not be there. If I put my finger on there, I also had a rash on my stomach and my back, 
in my butt Th those areas are much better now it was very red yesterday so i bought uh, aloe vera and i put it on my skin because also like in taiwan um, it's much colder so I couldn't tell if my skin was hurting also because it was drier So I didn't want like the rash and the dryness to mix, you know, com combine there um, I didn't want them to do teamwork and create this hybrid pain So I bought the gel this morning at 7-eleven next to this hotel and applied it Yeah, let's see what else so like I mentioned, I thought what I had was food poisoning, so I didn't go see the hospital, especially I had no energy. Actually, when I got to Taiwan, um, I got off the plane, and then at the quarantine, they checked my um, temperature, and they're like, oh, you have a fever, and then they took my blood, right? They drew my blood, and then they did the testing, and they sent me an email saying, there's a high chance I have dengue fever. And then when I got to my, oh, and then they took all my contact information, like where I'm staying in Taiwan, and every single place and then uh, I got to my hotel and I settled in and I just knocked out I was really tired because I came I flew in at around like 11 p.m. ish and then the next day the next morning I wake up and the hotel calls me and they're like oh you have dengue fever and then the uh, nurse will come and see you to talk more with you and I was like, at that point, I was getting ready for my friend's wedding and I was like, I'm gonna be late. I came to Taiwan to for my friend's wedding and I'm gonna be late. I'm gonna miss their ceremony. But I'm like, okay, well, I guess health, health is number one uh, because I don't wanna faint. I don't want anything bad to happen on the way to the wedding. So I might end up missing the whole thing anyhow then. So I waited, I waited at the hotel, talked to the, uh, the nurse and then um, yeah, everything went well and then uh, I went to the wedding and then the rest of the day was fine And then the next day um, When I developed the rash, I went to the doctor uh, Another doctor because when I flew into Taiwan the first night there was a hospital at the airport It was really cool because someone's sleeping there 24 7 someone's always there and um, when they opened the gates because was, everything was closed, it felt like a zombie movie. You know, they opened it up like from the top to bottom, like to the middle, and then they opened the glass, you know? So the next day, when I went to the hospital, I went to like a more typical hospital. They drew my blood again, and then they put me in this um, mosquito net bed. Felt like a, a kind of like a zombie princess. In terms of food, uh, you know, like I, unless I'm vlogging, I don't like to eat much white rice, uh, noodles, you know, like too much sugar. That includes fruit as well. Part of the brat diet, you know, when you're sick, they say to eat bread, rice, applesauce, banana. That's sugar. Those are all the things that make me feel really sleepy and tired, you know? So, but actually, uh, porridge, rice porridge is the only thing that made me not get nauseous. So I've been eating a lot of that, but now I widen my um, diet again. So I'm, you know, including some scram scrambled eggs, well scrambled eggs. Add a little bit of seaweed as well, some kimchi, um, brown rice. Without health, you have nothing. Usually, I have a lot more energy, and when I have a little bit of free time, even I'm trying to edit videos and trying to be productive, and even you know, like doing social media posting something on Instagram like twice a day but these days um, yeah, I get tired easily and you know, especially having an itchy body it's like hard to think about anything else you know I watched uh, two movies last night and that helped me take off mine from the pain the premiere on HBO of um, Bright Lights featuring Carrie Fisher and her mom and her family um, and then afterwards Hancock came out Will Smith Seeing him being powerful flying around made me feel better too. It gave me some power. Yeah, because if I do anything else, my mind keeps going back to this itchy feeling on the skin. And, oh, it, man. Oh, it's 11.10. I gotta pack and then check out by 12 or else I have to pay a fee. I had to mention something to you guys. So first off, I have a really hard time sleeping when my body's all itchy like this. So I woke up many times last night and the night before. Thing is, even if I'm not fully asleep, I'm like half asleep, I'm like in a different situation all the time. So what I mean is, like last night, um, there was a point where someone was like, give me your hand and there's like people walking around the room, da 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 I open my eyes and I'm like, 
what am I doing? Why am I responding to these voices or like whatever in my head and doing what they want me to do? They're not even here. It's not like a scary experience. It's not like ghosty or anything like that. I know it's like in my mind and it's maybe it's like a hallucination or so. I don't know. I don't even know what you call it. I looked online and there's a source that says uh, when you go through dengue fever, uh, you can have an altered, um, what is it, altered consciousness? So maybe that's what I was experiencing. Okay, that's all I remember for now. Uh, I gotta pack. After I came back home to the US, my skin shed for weeks. Whole time, I'm like, when is this gonna end? I also felt frequent indigestion and I couldn't eat the foods I normally would eat, including almonds and assorted nuts. And you know how much I love my almonds. During my recovery phase, I became very introverted. I filmed way less and I read more. Uh, also slowed down a lot and didn't feel bad about that. A few months passed and I became more of my normal self. So the whole dengue fever experience was humbling and reminded me how precious and fragile life is. Because yes, people do die from dengue fever. Some also experience organ damage and severe bleeding. But with early treatment, the mortality rate for all dengue fever is currently fewer than one of 100 people. So most likely when you get dengue fever, you will survive. But I highly encourage you still take preventative measure. Slap on that repellent, sleep with a mosquito net, and wear long-sleeved shirts and long pants. Even if the weather is warm, better to be safe than to regret. Mosquitoes that carry dengue can also carry yellow fever and the chikungunya virus. One bite could pass on multiple infections. Another thing I'd watch out for is stagnant water and choose your accommodations wisely. Cheaper lodging may mean no air conditioning and you want AC. Alright, so what was interesting and terrible to find out is there are four strains of dengue fever. So now I'm immune to one of the four strains, but I could still get it three more times. And the second time I get it, it's worse! Fun. There are dengue fever vaccines in development, but they're not available in the US at the time this video is released. Before you travel, I suggest that you look at the dengue fever map and do research on what other health risks may be involved with where you're traveling to. I'm not trying to freak you out or give you second thoughts on traveling. Traveling is amazing! You never know when you're going to experience something very enlightening, eye-opening. You never know who you're gonna meet, the new friends you'll make, the golden memories you'll share with them. The takeaway is, be prepared, put on repellent, don't get lazy about that. What I wish for you is to have fun and safe travels. I hope you found this video to be informative and I'll catch you guys next week. Remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell. For food and travel in Korea, check out my other channel, Sweet and Tasty TV. To relax at night, listen to ASMR Bedtime with Miss Mina. We read, crunch, crinkle, and more. Toodles, my noodles.